Welcome back to the Coffee Self-Talk Podcast. I am Kristen Helmstetter. Happy New Year! Actually, we're going to release this on New Year's Eve day, so that if anybody happens to hear it on New Year's Eve day, it can give them something to think about for New Year's Day. Because I want to talk about a secret to New Year's resolutions. So here's the thing. I love goals. And I love New Year's time. I love New Year's resolutions. I like the word resolutions. To me, it's it's finite. It's like resolve, like things I resolve to do. And I know that out there, some people like to set intentions. And that's cool. That's cool. That's fine. But I prefer resolution because setting intentions is too, I don't know, loosey-goosey for me. But resolutions, I mean, sure, they can change, but I like to have one to two goals that I'm going after for the year. And I think of them as resolutions, like I resolve to do these things. I resolve to achieve these. And I only ever keep it to one to two things. I mean, I used to actually look at my life and I used to divide it into facets like relationships and health and career and leisure and things like that. And then I would pick goals in each area and go after them. But I find myself lately more inspired to have goals and resolutions, just one to two. Because when you get too many, it becomes overwhelming and then you throw your hands up and you don't do anything. But there's a trick to this. There's a trick to New Year's resolutions, like a secret when it comes to achieving them. So here's how I attain goals. I look at it as, and I I frame it, and I think in my mind of my goal or my resolution as a habit that I'm going to start. And that's the goal. So perhaps you want to be more fit and healthy. And so what you do is you create a habit of going to the gym regularly, but you don't have a specific number of pounds that you want to lose because let's say you think, oh, I'm going to lose 10 pounds and like, that's my goal. But at the end of the 10 pounds, what you actually still have to do is keep these habits going, these healthy habits. So I like to frame my New Year's goals and my New Year's resolutions in a way that I am actually creating new habits that then help me achieve the goal that I'm after. Here's an example. If you wanted to gain 10 pounds of muscle and you think to yourself, that's my goal this year, 10 pounds of muscle. Well, then you attain that goal, but you still want to keep the habits that got you to the point to attain that goal. You're not going to just suddenly stop doing the habits. Or here's another example. Maybe you want to create the habit of a certain diet to help you get healthy and fit. I like to set New Year's resolutions as habits because it's a habit that will change my life. That even when I lose the weight or I gain the muscle or I start to feel healthier or learn the language that I'm working on learning. Let's talk about learning a language, for example. You don't just say, oh, I'm going to learn Italian. And then you reach the goal because you don't really ever reach that goal, right? I mean, you could say to yourself, I want to take the A2 language proficiency exam. But most people think to themselves, oh, I want to learn Italian. But you don't ever have a set end goal in mind with that. So instead, I would have the New Year's resolution that I'm going to practice my Italian three times a week. Because I know that's going to get me to achieve a goal of learning Italian. But there isn't a point where you just stop learning Italian, really. You kind of want to keep learning it. Because there's always more to learn. And so I like to create the goal. I resolve to create the ritual for practicing Italian three times a week. Or I create the goal of going to the gym every other day. Or maybe you want to be kind to yourself this year. I want massive self-love and kindness for myself. Well, that sounds awesome. Definitely. But you need to set up the action plan to make it happen. What's the habit of the person who loves themselves. Maybe it's a weekly mud mask and bath, or maybe it's a monthly pedicure. Maybe it's your daily coffee self-talk ritual that you're going to commit to doing every day, because those are the things that are going to get you to that ultimate place, which is self-love. And then here's the next big tip. Because I am thinking of my resolutions and goals as habits, or maybe consider them like steps to attaining that really 
end picture of what I want. The next secret to making all this happen is to put it on your calendar. I know, crazy, right? (laughs) But this really helps. So if you have the goal of self-love and you decide that you're going to show yourself self-love with a monthly pedicure, I want you to get on the phone and I want you to schedule that monthly pedicure on your calendar. I want you to make those appointments or at a minimum do like six months. Or if you're going to go to the gym because your goal is losing weight or eating healthier, put on your calendar every day for like the next six to 12 months when you're going to go to the gym. Because when it's on the calendar, it makes it official. Oh yeah, this is what I'm doing at that time on that day. And of course, you can revisit these things as you progress. You want to check in with your progress quarterly and see if you need to tweak anything. And that's another secret is checking in on your progress. And you know what you have to do? This isn't rocket science. You have to put on your calendar, check in quarterly. You have to put quarterly on your calendar to check in so that you remember to do it. Because sure, we think to ourselves, oh yeah, I'll check in in March or I'll check in in June. But we don't. Because we don't think about it. But when you put stuff on your calendar, it makes it so much more likely to happen. And what you're not going to do is put on your calendar, lose 10 pounds. Because that doesn't make sense, right? It's part of the process of designing how you're going to go about attaining that goal is you have to have that picture, that visual of the end product. Is it you speaking Italian fluently? Or is it you being able to read a book in Italian, or is it you at a certain size? But you don't put that on a calendar. And one of the tricks to making your goals happen and your New Year's resolutions coming true is having all of these steps or all the things that you need to do already written on your calendar. And the best time to do it is now. Yeah, for like the whole year, because how many of you got a new calendar for the year? I know I have one. So here's what you do. I want you to think of where you want to be one year from now. What do you desire? I want you to ask yourself, where do I want to be one year from now? Say that to yourself right now. Where do I want to be one year from now? I heard you. Good job. (laughs) Ask yourself next, what do I desire to be or have or be able to do? What is it you want? Or what is it you want to do? Or what is it you want to be able to do? And picture it, picture it in your mind, really get crystal clear on that picture. And this is a great exercise to do later. It's a great exercise for like New Year's Eve, maybe in the afternoon, if you're going to go out and party in the evening. So do this like in the afternoon or set your calendar up on a table that you're going to, you know, you're going to go into it New Year's Day or write these questions down and really think about them over the next couple of days or even take the whole first week of the year and think about what do I really want to have happen by next year, you know, one year from this date. And then as I teach it out in my book, Coffee Self-Talk, get that picture in your mind and really feel, feel how awesome it would be to achieve this. Really dig deep into that and really feel how incredible it will be to have attained that goal. And just pick like one or two things to work on, maybe three, three tops. But I really think that if you keep it limited to one or two things, and maybe you totally accomplish it mid-year or even a quarter of the way into the year, and then you can create a new one. But so many times we get too many things going, we get excited to do all these things, and then we end up not doing any of it. So get that picture in your mind and really feel how amazing it's going to be when you achieve that goal. What do you look like? How are you standing? What are you doing? Where are you? How does it feel? Next, after you do that, decide what main one to two habits you're going to do regularly to achieve that goal. So health is such a popular thing in the new year. So I'm just going to go with that one again. What are the one to two habits you're going to do? Are you going to eat a certain way? Are you going to intermittent fast three days a week? Are you going to go to the gym three days a week? Are you going to get a Peloton and do three classes every week? Whatever it is, think about the one or two habits you're going to do to make that goal a reality. And finally, you know what I'm going to say. Get your calendar. Schedule these things. Write it in. 
Pencil is fine because things change, but at least you get it down that these are the things you're going to do. You make appointments with yourself. And when you do this, you're way more likely to show up and make it happen. And that's how you change your life. That's how you make your dreams come true. It's how you get your goals done. Bam. Yes. That's what you do. So that's what I have for you today. My secret to attaining your goals for the new year, really embracing this idea of resolutions and really letting it sink into your heart that you resolve to do these things. Happy New Year! Woo, woo, woo! 2023 is going to be so awesome. Oh, and this is my podcast anniversary. It's its birthday. I started this podcast a year ago. I love all of you. Happy New Year. I'm sending you huge whale hugs. My arms are wrapped around you. Sloppy, sparkly kisses on your cheek. You feel it? Boom. (laughs) And a happy new year. If you have any questions for me, then please email me at kristen at kristenhelmstetter.com. And thank you for listening. I appreciate you. Now go live your magical life. Ciao, ciao.